My day begins well before most people are out of bed. All the long days and sleepless nights drive me to be the best. We absolutely slayed them in. All right, let's get up here and we'll turn them loose. We've got the place tore up. The sun's going down. We've got one more farm to hit. That commitment there. We can turn them up. Man. This is eight. Pretty good odds. We're good at what we do. This is my story. This is my time. This is trapping time. Trapping Time is brought to you by Blind Turtle at BlindTurtle.net, Smokey's Deer Lords at Smokey'sDeerLord.com, Blackwater Hunting Services at BlackwaterHunting.com, Southern Ohio Outfitters at SouthernOhioOutfitters.com, Papio Creek Trapping Supply at Papio Creek Trapping Supply.com, Big Game Gut Club at BigGameGutClub.com, Hunter's Help Technologies at Hunter'sHelp.com. Night Owl Lures at nightowlures.com. Hilltop Outdoor Supply at hilltopoutdoorsupply.com. Dakota Line Snares at dakotalinesnares.com. PCS Outdoors at pcsoutdoors.com. Duke Trap Company at duketraps.com. Old South Trapping Lures at oldsouthlures.com. Webster's Predator Control at shop.websterspredatorcontrol.com. Little Whiskey Girl at littlewhiskeygirl.com Wolf Creek Products at wolfcreekproducts.net Southern Snares and Supply at southernsnares.com Lennon Lures at lennonlures.com Murray's Trapping Supply at murrayslures.com Smitty Stretchers and Trapping Supplies Look them up on Facebook Hags Brand Trapping Products by J3 Outdoors at j3o.com Hello folks and welcome to this week's show. This week we're chasing muskrats in a stream in my hometown of Jollytown, Pennsylvania, which some may consider the muskrat capital of the world. <laughs> Not. You know, where I'm from, muskrat populations are low. Even when I was 16 and I started out trapping, we just didn't have a lot. So, I mean, you would almost consider my style of muskrat trapping to be more of a hobby trapper. I mean, everyone knows I, I bust on the muskrat trappers all the time. I'm always saying how, you know, it's you got to leave something for the women and kids to do. I'm a coyote trapper at heart. I like playing in the dirt. But every year I take a week and I try to hit the muskrats pretty hard. Knowing going into it that we just don't have a large population. So when we hit a stream, you may only catch three or four in one section and then you're moving on. I put out a little muskrat line yesterday. I didn't have a lot of time, so we're going to uh, extend it today. But I did get a few traps out. So it looks like my first trap, I actually caught something. Now trapping here, we're in Pennsylvania. It's a whole lot different than a lot of these guys that have big marshes and everything. We Muskrats and mink, they're far and few between. So, I mean, if you catch one or two a day on a certain stream, that's pretty good. So. But it looks like I've got one over here, so we're going to go over here and get it out of the trap. And we'll walk up the creek and see what else we have. You know, one of the main differences that separates coyotes and muskrats are usually the length of time that the traps are out there before you actually connect. You know, I've had coyote traps that have been out two to three weeks before I finally connect. Muskrat trapping, it's a little bit quicker results. You know, in trapping, in some points, in some times, it's a results-based business, you know. We throw a muskrat trap out today, there's a good chance we're probably going to catch something tomorrow because they are active, they're not as trap shy, they're not affected by scent control like a lot of other animals. So that's one of the reasons I always say, you know, we'll leave them for the women and kids. The kids going out there, you know, they want to see something in a trap. I mean, I take my daughter Peyton all the time on my coyote line and she gets upset sometimes because we don't catch a coyote every time. But when we hit the muskrat line, there's usually a pretty good chance I'm going to show her some fur in a trap. All right, now what we did here, it was a, what I would consider a slam dunk. I actually seen where this hole, where it had fresh, where they'd been coming in and out. So what I did, I took a fiberglass fence stake and I used a 110 power clip by Papio Creek. 
you want to talk about something easy right there that is about the easiest way to put out effective sets and get them out fast that clip fits right on that 110 and it slides into place wherever you need we're we're in a mud bottom creek so these fence stakes they work perfect as far as uh this type of terrain that slide right in the mud you hit them where they bought them out you take and slide that power clip down to whatever height you need and what's nice about these these will move 360 as well so you don't have to worry about looking for that perfect perfect location so we're gonna get him out of here and because i think there's more in here we're going to reset right in the same exact hole And that's it. I mean, simple as can be. Got us a real nice rat. That's a nice size rat for the area we're trapping, so I'm tickled to death with him. I mean, we don't have farmland here. Basically, we got a woods here, and there's this, this slow-moving creek, and I just thought I'd stop here and see if there was anything. And sure enough, we got lucky enough to take a rat, so we're going to move on up the creek and see if we have any more. That's one muskrat down for this little string. When we come back, I'm going to show you another way to take them by the feet. The graduating auger by Papio Creek. It's another tool that helps you put paws on your pan. Go check it out at PapioCreekTrappingSupplies.com. The Big Game Gut Glove is revolutionizing the way big game hunters and trappers are successful in the field. The 26-inch version fits over your elbows and protects you and your expensive hunting clothing from blood or cold water. They're made to fit your hands from extra small to extra large. What I like about them, I can feel with them. Existing products on the market don't give you the feel or protection you need. Wet or dry, the special non-slip grip bonds tightly to whatever you're handling. The Big Game Gut Gloves are reusable so you save money and promote going green. Who better to get your trapping supplies from than trappers who know what you need in the field? Come on in. PCS Outdoors is one-stop shopping for name brand trapping, predator hunting and calling supplies, shooting and pest control gear at discount prices. A lure for every animal you'd be targeting. PCS Outdoors stands above the competition. Quality Asabo brand snares being made here in Michigan. Go to PCSOutdoors.com for great selection and prices that will make you want to stock up for your next trapping or outdoor adventure. What do you demand in a quality knife? You want a knife that works as hard as you do. Weeby knives are made for trappers who want efficiency and perfection. The Weeby Elite double-edged fleshing knife has one edge that's ultra sharp, and the other side has just the right edge for pushing fat and meat for perfectly fleshed furs. And don't forget about the Weeby Wicked Sharp, the planet's sharpest skinner. When the blade goes dull, simply snap on a new one, and you're ready to go. Find them at dakotalionsnares.com. You know that first muskrat we caught, we caught in a body gripping trap. You know, body gripping traps in the muskrat world have their advantages. I mean, usually when they go off, it's 100% kill. Uh, fastening them, it's not as important to anchoring them down because there's not a lot of fight. When that trap goes off, they're done. But one thing that's nice about muskrat trapping is the equipment is light, so you're able to carry a lot of different size traps to fit different situations on the string. Now this here is probably one of the most typical setups you can get when you're muskrat trapping. And all I did was I wired off to a log. We're using a uh, one and a half duke. I like the one and a half duke because it's it's a big enough trap. I do catch a coon or get into some mink. It's heavy enough that when they get out there, it drowns them really fast, um, especially with the muskrats. Um, it's plenty of trap and it's heavy, you know. Um, this particular set here, we had this undercut bank, and I just put a little bit of muskrat lure back in this hole, and these muskrats will work along this, these banks like this and they'll want to get up underneath here. They feel safe from you know birds of prey and stuff. I just put a little bit of muskrat lure in there, a little Mad Hatter from uh, mm, Witch Doctor Lures. Put it up in the head of this hole. I kind of fenced it off. I don't know if you can see. I took a couple sticks there and I fenced it off so he had to go in one direction. One thing about muskrats, they're not hard to catch. They're, uh, they're very easy. You can divert them wherever you need to go. So, but uh, real nice rat. Uh, we're going to reset it here. It looks like there's a good bit of muskrat sign in here, and uh, we're going to take advantage of it because we don't have a lot of muskrats in our area. So 
we're going to take advantage of this. You know, if you find them, you might as well take advantage of it. But real good, real good looking rat. Awesome. Awesome. These things can be a lot of fun, you know. My trap of choice when I'm using footholes, especially for muskrats, is a one and a half Duke cool spring. I like the cool springs because they're strong enough that if I do catch a mink or if I catch a coon, they're going to hold it. But they're still small enough that I can bed them really nice in the mud. Uh, a lot of guys like long springs, which are great, but you know, I started out using cool springs. I feel comfortable with them. I know I can get them bed really, really good, and I know that they'll hold anything that's going to come along on the stream. Now, we're going to put this trap right back in here. I like to have about an inch of water over top of it. Because sometimes if you get a little deeper than that, they may just swim right over top of it. I paint my traps black. You don't have to. It's just something I like to do. These muskrats, they're not gonna, that's not gonna affect them. I like it because it blends in pretty good. So just like when we're canine trapping, you want to make sure that that trap is bedded solid. You don't want it moving. Uh, when they come in here, they got a solid plant, plant your foot on it. And away they go. But that was a reset on this one here. Um, they've been spending a lot of time here, so I'd say about every muskrat in the creek probably <laughs> using this little thing here. But what I like about it is there's a good chance we might catch a mink because of these tunnels. You see how this grass overhangs right here? They're going to work along its edge right here, and uh, we're going to take advantage of that. So, you know, for a guy who doesn't do a lot of muskrat trapping, I'm really starting to have a great time. Well, got us another one. Let's move on down the creek. When we come back. Mark Steck from the Dakota Line Snares is going to give us a little insight on his muskrat line on the Duke Trap Set of the Week. Do you need a blind that will keep you warm on a cold winter day? Do you need a blind that won't blow away on a windy fall afternoon? Do you need a blind that will never wear out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you need a Blind Turtle Hard Shell Hunting Blind. This solid one-piece unit is perfect for deer hunters, turkey hunters, archery hunters, and gun hunters. Put it this way, if you hunt, the Blind Turtle is perfect for you. Where'd you get all that stuff? DakotaLineSnares.com. I bet it cost you a fortune to ship all that. Nope, not DakotaLineSnares.com. It's $9.95, flat rate. It doesn't matter what you get. Dakota Line Snares and Trapping Products has everything you need right at your fingertips. Our warehouse is packed with trapping supplies you need to be successful on your trap line. And with flat rate shipping of $9.95 on all orders, you get your money's worth. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to put my order in at DakotaLineSnares.com now. The trophy moment only lasts a couple of seconds, but the story will be passed on for generations. They only see the glory, not the sacrifice. But I don't wait for my tall tale of glory. I handcraft my journey from start to finish. They don't see what goes on behind closed doors. An epic saga is worth a thousand words, but my story boils down to three. Little Whiskey Girl. Save luck for the weekend hunter. This week, we're going to go play in the water with Mark Steck, owner of Dakota Line Snares from Lenox, South Dakota. Now, Mark's going to show us two sets that you really need in your bag of tricks if you're going to concentrate on water trapping. Let's go see what he has to offer. Okay, we're along a creek here, and I'm going to put in a pocket set. Pocket set is uh, primarily used for mink. It's, it'll take every coon and muskrat that swims along here, comes along here. It's an all-around set, really. And... Um, We'll just put in the pocket here first. Sometimes I kick them in. This is just fine for kicking it in. Sometimes I have to use my shovel, but this is fine. We've got a nice bed there for the trap. The trap is going to guard this hole. I've got a 30 inch T bar stake. First time I'm going to set the trap. This is a one and a half coil spring at the Victor. That is the bread and butter. The one and a half coil spring is the bread and butter of the mink, coon, and muskrat trapping industry. Now I'm going to angle this stake away. Good 
because the coon, if I get a coon here, he's going to be pulling this way. The mink is going down quick and drown, so is a muskrat. The coon is what you really have to stake heavy for. I wear these 18 inch rubber gloves. And if you aren't used to them, it takes a while to get used to them. They're, you know, they're just, they're a little loose on your hands. And I just place that trap right in front of that hole. The main appeal of the set is the visual. It's the hole. Mink love those. They're going to go for it. You can put a piece of cart back in there. A lot of times they'll do that. Or you can put some fish oil on there. Muskrats, it's a visual thing. They're going to go right to that hole. I'll just put a little fish oil right around here. That wouldn't really matter. You could you could put coyote ear in there if you wanted. It's just going to, the smell is going to draw critters. But it's going to be fine without any smells too. Now this steak, I don't have it in all the way because it's tight right now. It's in there good. And so it'll cause me less work pulling it out when I do pull. Now we're missing one key element here. That hole is just a little bit wide. No problem for a coon. They're just all feet. But a mink, you want it the width of this to guard the trap. The trap is right here. And so almost every every one of these sets I end up putting in a guide stick. And I can feel the edge of the trap. Put that right there. That set is now ready to go. The guys that catch, there's guys that catch upwards of 800 mink in some areas of the country. This is the only set they use. And I'd probably have three or four of these in right in here. And this is going to stay open here too when it gets cold because the water's moving good. Um, so it, it is the key set for mink trapping, coon trapping in water and muskrats that take every one of those two. You know a pocket set is probably one of my favorite sets to do especially when I'm targeting mink and muskrat. Now Mark's going to show us another little set that he likes to use when he wants to get some eye appeal to put some fur in his trap. Okay we're going to put in a muskrat set here. There's not a lot of muskrats in this creek and it's not like you can find their dens real easy. Um, and so what I do, I just they, they love crawling up on banks and I just give them some eye appeal to crawl right up here. Make a little bed at the bottom. I'm gonna get in the camera's way here. But I really want this to have visual appeal. Okay, that's what I want right there. Muskrats are extremely easy to catch. Once in a while, I'll get a call from somebody that says, I, I, did, I set 30 traps in the spot, I'm not getting any. Well, the rats aren't there. Um, is there you'll get rats, you set traps, you can you can set traps all over you'll get better at it but you can't hardly set a trap you'll see where they're crawling up you're gonna get them if they're there um, they're fun to trap yeah I got the trap set right at the base yeah we stake for cooling even though you want a rat here. That set's ready. You see how he's guided in there? Little trough there. It can't miss if there's rats swimming by here. Thanks Mark. When we come back, I'm gonna try that pocket set out and see if that Green County stream still has one more muskrat in it. For some of us, trapping season never ends. 
It's in our blood. It defines the very person we are. Let Southern Snares be part of your trapping world. Be sure to try out our best-selling capital punishment predator bait and our new pure gator oil. You take every step to make sure your hunt is safe. Now, take safety to the next level and make sure your field dressing is as safe as the hunt. Hunter's Help Technologies has found a way to make sure your post-hunt responsibilities are as safe as possible. The Easy Gut tool helps you get the chest cavity open without cutting anything but that skin that you want to cut. The trachea cutter does just what it says. You just reach into the chest cavity and punch right through that tough trachea. No more fumbling with a knife to try to avoid cutting yourself in the process. You can find all our products at Hunter'sHelp.com. This particular stream that we're trapping, you know, it's only 10 to 15 feet wide, probably in its widest spot. In depth, you may be only looking at three to four feet in the deepest holes, which is typical of the streams that we have in that part of Pennsylvania. So, I mean, if you're driving down the road and you don't think you have any muskrats because your streams don't seem big enough, or you don't have a lot of big marshes, you need to get out and put some miles on your feet and, you know, check out and look for some sign. You know, when I scouted this stream here, it had everything that a muskrat trapper is looking for. We've got steep mud banks, you know, so they can dig in, burrow, you know, make their burrows in it. Um, we like the mud because we can see the tracks, you know, the scat. We're looking on top of rocks, you know. If there's rocks or logs there, those muskrats are, they cannot get on those rocks. It's just, it's a place for them to get away from predators. It gets them out of the water. So if you take those tips and you start scouting some of your local streams, you may have muskrats and not even know it. We've got a little bit of a rain coming in. Just a little bit cloudy. You see these streams here, we don't have, I mean, I'm standing in like a foot and a half of water. And a lot of times what I'll do, if I'm focusing on even coons or even mink, I make these little pocket sets. And looks like we may have us something in here. Number three on the day for the Green County Kid. Now this here is just a typical pocket set. Now our focus today was actually mink, but where there's mink, there's usually muskrats. And all we did was we took this little stake of wood. You can pre-make these. I make them about two foot long, pre-drill them so I can wire them. These mud banks, I can drive them in deep enough. That way, if we happen to connect on a coon, because you are, there's a chance you're gonna catch some coons. We have enough, uh, to hold them in here until we can get them to check. I mean, we're in Pennsylvania now. We got a 36 hour check. I'm gonna check these every day. But a very simple setup. We just took a wire. We hooked it onto a Duke one and a half. And as you can see, we caught him by both, both front feet. The trap's heavy enough. They can, I give them enough wire. There's probably about three foot of wire on there. I give them enough wire. They can pull themselves out. If it's a heavy enough trap. It'll hold them in water and drown them. But uh, little sets like this are very quick easy we threw a little bit of mink lure and a little bit of muskrat lure on it just because i don't want to take a chance of missing these muskrats because we got a better chance of catching a muskrat in here than we do a mink anyway so very simple i like about a half to an inch of water over top of my traps now we've got a steady rain coming in so there's a good chance that uh, we may end up getting some rising water so it's not going to hurt it to be uh, be a little bit under so but we're going to take this out of here that, no that's a that's a real good looking rat. I mean, that's what you're after. We'll shake him off a little bit when we get back. But uh, real nice looking rat. <laughs> Could have done that again if I tried. We'll get a little bit closer here. All right, what we're gonna do is we want this one and a half right inside this pocket. This is their attractions up in here. I always like levers first. I never really found with uh, any of the water stuff it really mattered, but uh, when it comes to canines, everybody knows my theory on that. I want this thing set at a hair trigger, especially for mink, because that way it's light and they definitely set it off. But I want that bedded really, really good. A lot of guys don't worry about it too much when they're water trapping. I want that trap as solid as I can get, even when I'm water trapping. But that's the finished set, ready for another one. So. Very simple setup for muskrats. If you take advantage of it, it'll put more fur in your shed. All 
I want to thank everybody for tagging along with me on my little line here in Greene County. You know, muskrat trapping, whether you're a water trapper or you're a land trapper, you know, you should really get out there and do both, you know. If you're if you excel at land trapping, if you're a coyote man, if you're a fox man, you know, use some of those same tactics when you're in the water. You know, you're looking for sign, you know, you're looking for tracks. If you will do that, if you expand your horizons and make become a more versatile trapper, you know, it's only going to make you excel on your line that you really like to do, like land and water. And don't worry, I left plenty of muskrats for you ladies and kids. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. And until next time, as we always say, we're keeping the tradition alive here at Trapping Time. This is not a bad rat. We're using a Duke 175, or a, pardon me, Duke 120. I get so used to saying that I'm using my reliable 175, sometimes I forget, you know, I'm only trapping muskrats here. All we're gonna do is we want this one set, this one, all we want is this one and a half. If you liked what you saw, go to our Facebook page, Trapping Time TV, and let us know what you think. Or you can go to our website at trappingtimetv.com.